Okay, everybody, here is the Cameo 4 that I have been using for about a month now, just experimenting with things. And uh, there were a few issues that I had with it when it first came. First of all, I had a problem with the auto blade, which I'll tell you in about in a little bit, but it was an easy, easy fix once I learned what to do. And then, of course, when I first got the machine, the second carriage didn't have any blades available for it, so I couldn't experiment with that. So I'm going to tip this up because you can't see it from my angle here, and I want you to see inside of the unit. So I've got actually one of my son's socks here. Oh, and other things are falling apart on me. Let's put some things up. All right. So um, these are the two blades, and there are some differences on the um, between the Cameo 3 and the Cameo 4. So one of the things is the auto blade system. The back of this is flat, and there's a metal bar here, and this is somehow read by the machine to know what kind of blade is in here. So it knows that this is an auto blade when I put this in here. And to secure it, you push the tab in, and you get this green circle, and that means it's inserted correctly and properly. And so, to take it out, you pull it, the tab and lift out. So my problem was is that it wouldn't tap the right number of times to get to the blade depth it should have and also then it didn't cut so I was really mystified about it and I finally got an answer from Swing Design they told me to take a little plier and screw this piece this very bottom piece to the right and when I did that it fixed the problem so I guess there was some kind of manufacturing problem where this little piece here was not turned on quite all the way. But once that happened, it cut like a dream. Now, I don't have a Cameo 3, so what I'm telling you as far as differences are only based on my reading and what I know about the 4. But, um, my understanding is with Cameo 3, the auto blade would have to click down and then click up. With this one, it clicks, it moves it far to the left and clicks it once and it moves it all the way to the zero. Then it moves a little bit to the right, and it clicks the number of times needed for the number of blade uh, depth, and then it goes from there. And so what's really kind of nice, and I assume the three was the same way in this regard, that if you were doing, say, a um, score line versus a cut, it could do the cutting, and then it, could, then it goes all the way over, pushes it down once, and it goes back to zero, then it goes over and taps up to two, I think it is, and then goes ahead and cuts or, you know, slices for the folds or the score lines. So it works really sweet. I really do like the auto blade functionality. Now, about hmm, two weeks ago, maybe, I received in the mail my rotary blade. So same thing this has a metal bar in here and if I try to put it in here it's not going to read it somehow or another it gets something out of this bar to tell it what it is and you'll notice there's a two I should pull this one out there's a one on this one let me see if I can show that to you and that is telling you the user that this one goes in the carriage one and this one goes in carriage two now you'll see the little rotary blade sticking out of this uh, blade carriage here. It has no depth measurement because um, there isn't one. Um, it just, you know, it, it does the, um, the pressure and the I don't know what else, pressure and speed, I guess, based on the fact you're cutting certain items. So I don't think there's any depth thing going on with this. Um, however, it does lift up and then move and cut again. So, uh, and it needs to do that to change directions uh, so that you can always get the 
blade moving in the direction you need it. So again, once you put that in, you're going to get the nice green circles there to tell you it's in correctly. Some other things about the machine. Um, to move around the guides here, it's really simple. You just push this down. It lifts this bar up. And then if you want to move this one, it's at a weird little angle. There we go. Um, you just press the lock button down and then it moves freely. I mean, super freely. So it's really quite nice. Then these just slide. There's no, nothing you have to push or pull. So you can see I can do this with one hand. And I think you can also maybe move this one. I guess I haven't tried. Maybe not. I don't know. Probably not that one. But these three you can move. So that's great. And then when you're ready, when you've moved things where you want it, you just push that down again. Or up, I guess, in this case. Down to make it move up and push up to bring the bar down again. So that's how that works. Now, there is a little bit of storage on board, which is way less than what the 3 has. All you get is this. So it's big enough for what I have here which is a ratchet blade and the ratchet blade you'll notice now has this bar only because I've got a adapter on it so I should have yeah here it is I was gonna say I should have looked at this closer I can't, couldn't remember but um, this is a normal ratchet blade from the three and you just put that in and close it up. There is a ridge in here and I know that that has something to do with my issue. There we go. Now it fit in there finally. So yeah, it's a bit awkward. You know, I'm pretty nimble with my fingers and I had a hard time with that as you saw. And also the adapters are pretty flimsy. I'm a little concerned that they'll break because all that's holding this one together is this little piece right here and it's already kind of turning whitish from being opened and closed. So my fear is that that is going to um, probably break at some point. And I think, you know, that could be an unfounded fear. This plastic could be a lot tougher than it looks. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but the plastic itself is rather light and it just doesn't seem that like high quality. But again, that could be deceiving. It might be just really good plastic and it's just you know, not as flimsy as it appears to be. So I can see now what the trick is, is um, you'll want to put it in with that kind of T design in there. And when you do that, then it'll shut really easily. So that's the trick. So anyway, the nice thing that they've done is they've made sure that you can use the blades and the pens uh, in carriage one even though it's a new machine so it will fit right in there and allow you to use your your old tools which you know a lot of companies don't bother to do that they just expect you to buy everything brand new so I really do appreciate silhouette for that now there are more adapters that come this one is for the ratchet blade there's a few more one is for the pen and I think one is for the old tool or the old uh, universal pen adapter. I haven't played with any of that yet. Um, I did put a pen in the pen holder and it worked fine. But I didn't really, um, well I did do a design with it but I didn't experiment a whole lot with it. And I'll do that later. I just wanted to kind of show you the basic stuff right now. So, let's see, the other thing that's very different from my understanding is that there used to be the tool holder here. When you pulled it out, you would lift it up and there was a tool holder. And then also you'd use this as kind of a guide for your mat. Now, you can still use it as a guide for your mat, but what they have done now is they have put in a roll feeder for your vinyl, which I think is a fabulous idea. Of course, because I'm tipped upside down, or at an angle here, it doesn't want to lay right, but let's get rid of that for a second. And so now you can see, you can move this out to whatever width you need for your roll. 
and it will fit in here and then you feed the uh, vinyl through this and then through your machine and so that's really nice I think to have that built in many people use vinyl a lot I am not one of those people but this is now so convenient that I may actually try to use it a little more it's just I've stuck with paper more than vinyl up to this point All right then the other cool feature related to that is it's got a built-in cutter in the back and I don't know if the three had this or not I think you had to buy it as an add-on but you guys who have threes can confirm that for me but what you do is after you're done with the roll coming out you can then use the cutter here it's kind of hard upside down I'm not sure why I can't move there we go and the cutter can move back and forth to cut your vinyl I think I just had trouble there because it was upside down to me yeah it needs to get all the way down and then you can there you go so anyway I think that's a nice feature now the machine itself is a little more compact the Cameo 3 you lifted the lid and you needed a good clearance space because of that now this one does not require that it slides back and comes out the back side and so you don't need any more height for storing it than what you've got here which is really pretty awesome I think um, over here we have the keyboard with the Cameo 3 but now we just have really a few things um, it's not lit up right now but you'll see directional arrows and then this is your mat up in there there's the directional arrows so if you want to move over the carriage or move it down or move it to the side you can just press it and then you have the mat in and mat out and then this symbol is the wireless symbol so when you are functioning wirelessly this one actually turns blue like that so that's kind of nice you can tell whether you're connected or not by looking at this or looking at your software but either one will tell you what's going on now you do need a computer to make this work and the best thing is to be wireless I think but you do have the um, the plug-in here it's the not the it's not a typical USB it's the one that's shaped kind of like a U it's kind of a chunky piece but then the, on the other end is a USB um, and so you can put it into your computer so you'll want to connect it to your computer when you're doing your firmware and software updates if needed uh, because they recommend you do that and um, that's what I did as well and it comes with one of those so you don't have to have an extra one laying around or anything all right so now what besides this that I've just covered um, is different all right well there's quite a few things for biggest thing I think is force the downward force on a Cameo 3 is only 500 grams and it's 5,000 grams on the new Cameo 4 and that is for carriage 2 carriage 1 is the same with 500 grams but anytime you use this carriage you get an extra extra hard heavy downward force when needed the cutting speed when using just the normal auto blade is about three times faster according to manufacturer and it is quite a bit faster than my old portrait too I can tell you that Bluetooth they're both uh, Bluetooth but they have supposedly increased the range of this to be a little longer I don't know how far I haven't tried to test this myself but um, your range is supposed to be a bit better um, with Cameo 3 you have the original auto blade with the round top with this one we have the auto blade 2 which they call a single tap uh, blade um, there is a rotary blade that you've already seen right here and we do have a craft blade and so they do have a, a Cameo 3 craft blade now 
and they also have a Cameo 4. So I have gotten that auto blade, but I haven't tested it yet um, because I want to get some balsa wood or something like that, and I just haven't found it. I'm probably going to have to order some, uh, and I'll be happy to show the results of that. But when you have the, the 4, you've got more room. It's a 3 millimeter space as opposed to a 2 millimeter space in the Cameo 3. So you can do not only thicker things, but then because you have such good pressure here, downward force, you can cut things uh, without ruining anything. Um, I've heard of some people ruining blades trying to call, uh, cut balsa wood with the Carriage 1 in the Cameo 3. There is a what's called a punch tool that we don't have yet. The punch tool is intriguing to me. It's supposed to punch a hole or mark the pieces of a design that would be weeded out. So if that worked the way it is intended, that could be extremely helpful, helpful for speeding up and making sure that when you weed, you don't weed the wrong things in your design. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that works as well. And that is one reason why I haven't gone very wild about vinyl, because I don't like weeding generally. I know some people love to weed. It's the most relaxing thing ever. To me, it is uh, akin to water torture for some reason. <laughs> um, let's see. Cutting dimensions are still the same. It's 12 inches by 10 feet. Uh, Let's see, roll feeder, we showed you that. We have um, the teeth and grip kind of uh, uh, roll feeders in Cameo 3. And in Cameo 4, we have what's called the single hand because you can move it around with just a single hand. With the tooth, my understanding is, or the teeth version in Cameo 3, it takes more than a, a hand. you got to use both hands to do that. Now there is, of course, still two carriages, but the big difference with four is that this one has a gear uh, mechanism in it, and that's how it's getting a bigger force or harder force than the Cameo 3. This one still has the old mechanism, this has the gear mechanism. Now, the one disadvantage at first blush is that with Cameo 3, you know, you can write and cut at the same time because you can put the pen, say, in carriage two and the cutter blade in, in carriage one. And so, um, at least when it first came out, you couldn't do cutting and writing at the same time. But my contention is, is that you should be able to use the precision blade to cut paper just fine, even though it's in the second carriage, but put that in carriage two and your pen in carriage one, and I see no reason why you couldn't cut and write using that method. So that'll be something I'll need to test. Perhaps the craft knife won't work with paper, but I don't really understand, you know, really why it wouldn't work right now anyway. It has the auto tool detection in the Cameo 4, so that's what that back, or that's why this is flat, so we have this bar here so it can detect what sort of blade is in here. It even detects quite well and surprisingly to me, that if I take this out and put in the ratchet blade, the machine right away knows that I've got the ratchet blade in there because it says it in the software, and the same with the pen. So it, that technology works quite well. So looking at disadvantages and advantages, I mentioned a few disadvantages. One is the storage, really minuscule. Um, it's kind of sad, <laughs> actually, in a way. Um, the other disadvantage is maybe you can't write and cut at the same time, but I'm still saying the jury might be out on that. Um, another advantage is going to be having that built-in cutter back here. And there is um, a replaceable blade for that cutter, so we don't need to worry about that getting dull and, and becoming useless. And we still have, as an advantage, this piece that we can bring out when not used for vinyl to support our mat. So that's still a good advantage. Another advantage is the one-handed movement of your roll feeders. Now I don't have the Cameo 3 as I mentioned, but I do really enjoy the touch screen here. Now the, the other one had, has touch screen as well. 
um, but it's so simple there's really very little to this interface um, noise wise it's still very noisy um, they say the decibel level is lower of course I can't really test that or I don't know really how I would test it there's probably an app for that but it's still loud it's certainly louder than my Cricut by far um, so there's that if you have small children you may not want to have it near your ch children's bedrooms or something like that because it could disturb them I think the Cricut could too frankly but the Cameo is definitely more ratchety sounding and um, high-pitched maybe is the right word um, so that it it's just um, more noticeable I think than the Cricut which tends to have a lower noise rather than higher pitched noise all right so that's that the other you know I, I mentioned that I had a couple problems one was the auto blade not working and I talked you through that one the other problem I was having was that it wasn't cutting felt right I tried to cut felt and it would cut into the design so I started by just doing something simple like a circle and a square and what would happen is it would cut into my circle or my square in order to turn the blade in the right direction to make the next cut so obviously the software was messed up um, so I gave up on that for a bit and waited for the software to catch up the other thing I was having trouble with was doing print then cut it would not register my um, registration marks so the only way I could get print and cut to work was to use the manual registration process and then it cut fine but obviously that's not the way it's supposed to work so um, I actually kind of set it aside and didn't touch it for a while and kind of waited for the next software upgrade and in the meantime I was able to make contact with somebody at Silhouette who sent me a test file and told me okay the new the new software is out there upgrade to that and give it a try and let me know how it works and lo and behold when I updated it then everything started to work perfectly so I've had no problem since then doing the print and cut the way it's supposed to work automatically and then also uh, with cutting the felt and not getting that blade inside my design all right there's one more advantage to mention about the Cameo 4 that's different from the 3 the 4 can do matless cardstock cutting which is pretty exciting to think about so what it does is it cuts uh, out a design but then skips here and there leaving a piece of cardstock between the cuts therefore creating basically punch outs so once it uh, gets done cutting you take your piece out and you can punch out whatever you had uh, cut with it and I've tried it a little bit I'm not really that thrilled with it right now you, there's so many settings you can control the width of the cut the width and size of the um, the little piece that remains before it starts cutting again uh, to create that punch out I need to practice that a bit more and perhaps I will like it better down the road but right now wasn't that thrilled with it when you punched it out first it was hard to punch out I was afraid I would tear things and secondly um, it shows or leaves behind that little tab from every place that was connected when it cut it um, which is the same you're going to find with any pretty much punch out piece so uh, I think there are some things that could be done differently to make it work better so I'm going to practice a little bit with that before I show it to you and I'll give you a review as well so there are several things I will be showing you soon I'm going to show you cutting with um, felt so you can see how that test went I will do uh, vinyl and show the roll cutter and the cutter in the back and show you how that works um, I will also get the precision blade out and some balsa wood and give that a try in this new carriage too and see how it cuts uh, hopefully we will get that punch tool for the vinyl as well for weeding purposes and we'll show you that um, we'll show the matless cutting and then we'll see what's left I, I would like to also try the foil quill in here there are adapters that should work for the foil quill so uh, we'll see if that does work the same way as it has for the Cricut and the brother that I have 
which has been awesome in those machines. So we can test that as well. And um, I'm sure we'll come up with some other ideas too, but that's what I have planned at the moment. So make sure you subscribe and click the bell so that you get notifications. I promise those videos will be much shorter and concise. This one I know I've kind of rambled a little bit. But now if you're interested in learning more about the foil quill, I've got a couple videos right there for you. You can click on those. They're the playlists for either the uh, Cricut or for the Brother Scan and Cut. So if you're interested in either of those machines and using um, the foil quill, go check that out. I've got lots of other videos on uh, product reviews and things too, so you can look for those as well. All right, well, that'll do it for me. Thank you for joining me. Hope this was helpful to you, and I'll be back soon with some more test cuts.